I've actually done a few flights with the AR drone, but uh, this is the first one that I'm going to be doing on camera. So, uh, just want to show you guys the drone itself. I did an unboxing, but I'll just give you a general overview. So included, you've got the uh, inside hull, so the indoor hull. I'm not going to be using that since I am flying outside today. So I have the orange and yellow. Uh, outdoor hull. The outdoor hull doesn't provide protection for the propellers, but it does offer slightly better performance because it's lighter weight as well as better battery life once again because it's lighter weight so the motors don't have to work as hard. So I've got the included uh, 1000 milliamp hour LiPo battery. It's fresh off the charger so I should get about 12 minutes of flight time out of it depending on uh, how hard it has to work. So just go ahead and put that in like that. Now immediately plugging in the battery, the LED lights turn on. I'm just going to put the unit over there for a second. And I want to show you guys the binding process. So what you do is you go and look for the Wi-Fi network that is AR drone, whatever your AR drone happens to be. So once you've connected, so the AR drone is its own hotspot. So you'll see the Wi-Fi will turn on there. And then all you do is go into I've got AR Free Flight, and then I actually have a couple of third-party apps, Drone Ace and Drone Control. These are cool. Um, they allow for some additional functionality, like uh, flashing the LEDs different colors, uh, performing a couple stunts, like wiggling back and forth, spinning in circles, that kind of stuff, as well as recording um, video and photos. I'm just going to be using the AR Drone OEM one to start with here. Actually, sometimes it takes a minute to... Uh, to connect properly and to boot up. So uh, why don't I finish? Let's see. Oh, yeah, there we go. So connecting, checking, updating bootloader and checking version. I did have to update the AR drone the first time I used it, but it was a simple process and it was just a matter of uh, doing an over the air upgrade. It took about five minutes between the iPad and the AR drone itself. So you can see the front mounted camera here. I am standing in front of it now. Those are my feet. So here, this should give you some idea of what the delay is like on the camera. Can you see my foot as well as the iPad? Okay, so you guys can see that. So it's not instantaneous, but it's pretty darn good. And then there's also the bottom mounted camera. So now you can see the ground underneath the AR drone. So you can switch between those. And there's also a picture in picture view mode where we can see the bottom camera here and the top camera here, or the front camera here and the bottom camera here. Okay, well, I'll show you the basic controls as well before we get started here. So you can reposition the joysticks anywhere you want just by pressing down. So you can see this, the guy's moving around. So pressing down on the iPad here allows me to control the air drone front back, side to side movement just by tilting the iPad. And then this guy does up, down, and then rotating left and rotating right. So like this, okay, up and down like that, okay. Uh, there's also an emergency button to cut out. And then this is the take off and land button. I'm not gonna press that just yet. So let's go ahead and put the hull on. It's just a matter of slipping it on the front here. All right. Now this drone has actually been through some uh, fairly impressive crashes so far. And I have to say the durability of this thing compared to RC uh, devices that I've used in the past is outstanding. Actually here I'll show you a couple of the durability related features. So number one is the awesome foam that they use on the hulls themselves. They can take quite a beating. Now I've had pieces of them actually snap, but I was able to, I can't even find the part that was broken on this one anymore. I was able to repair them quite easily using a little bit of epoxy. The propellers are also made of a very flexible material. So that means that once they hit something, they do have some give to them so they won't just snap instantly. And also they, the electronics in the AR drone will allow it to actually cut out all four motors as soon as one of them encounters resistance. So if you hit a branch, for example, it'll cut out all the motors, the AR drone drops down, and then what happens is that prevents further damage to the more delicate motors and gear assemblies versus if they did not cut out when it hit the ground and bad things happen, okay? Now, I did have one particularly bad crash. I just wanna show you guys this. Can you see that that's kind of mangled? 
and can you see that the gear is kind of bent? You can get replacement parts, actually I should mention this, for almost every part of the AR drone. With the replacement part list you could pretty much build an AR drone from scratch if you wanted to. You can get replacement housings, bases, um, motherboards, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, you can get replacement gears. I don't have any and I do need to use it for this video. So what I did was, what happened was I hit a branch and then it fell down directly onto a curb. So the odds of this kind of thing happening were pretty much slim to none, but it happened to me, of course. It fell from about eight feet high, so that was bad. So this broke off, and you, can you see the bend there? Okay, so what I did was I glued it to tack it in place, and then I melted the plastic back together, and it actually, see the gears still work? So it actually flies okay, which is kind of remarkable. So I'm just gonna show you guys a quick flight here around my backyard. And I apologize for that segment of the garden. We haven't done anything with that yet. That's more like what we're aiming for here. But it's sort of one year at a time here. So here we go. Takeoff time. So the AR drone automatically takes off and hovers a couple feet above the ground. So here, let's show you guys the, uh, the basic controls. So here's your up. As soon as you let go of the controls, the AR drone will actually hover itself which is remarkable compared to most other RC devices out there. It actually uses the bottom mounted camera to keep itself from drifting around, which is very cool. So here you go, I can control the yaw. Don't worry, I'm not gonna point it at you. Okay, so I'm going to rotate it until I can see myself here. Hold on, a little bit more, a little bit more. Let's go nice and gently, gently. Okay, I'll just move. There you go. So now you guys can see, well you don't have to keep moving, I'm moving myself. So you can see me in the iPad, right? There you go. You can also see the AR drone holding itself still in the air over there. So let's go ahead and uh, let's move it around a little bit. So as I mentioned before, as soon as you put your thumb here, you can start to control the AR drone by tilting it back and forth. So that's your general movement control. Now it can move quite fast. So let's go ahead, we'll just go forward and we'll just kind of do a little circuit here. Now I would definitely recommend for your first few flights that you do them indoors because it's a little bit tricky to get the hang of, especially when the orientation of the drone is uh, changing around in the air in front of you. So sometimes it's kind of hard to tell which way to tilt it to turn the way you want to turn, okay? So, like I said, no matter what you're doing, let's say you're going, uh, here, let's bring it this way. So let's say you're moving forward, let go of the controls, boom, AR drone will hover, just like that. Very cool, right? Okay, so now there's a lot of debate on the interwebs about whether the AR drone can actually be piloted when you don't have a line of sight to it. I would say yes, but slowly. So here, I'm gonna take you guys around the other side of my house you're probably gonna to wanna to be looking at the iPad here because uh, the AR drone won't be visible very soon. So here we go, hold on. Like I said, when you let go of it, it will immediately stop. So here, I don't wanna to get too close to those branches. So I'm just going to uh, check around, make sure we're not too close to anything here. That's good, that's good. So I think we're, we're high, low, low enough that we won't touch on those. So here we go, we can stop at any time, we can look around. There's my ladder, there's my gas meter, there's my barbecue, and there is, uh, here. I'll show you guys where I am. Hello, I'm over here. Can you see me? Yes or no? Yeah, you can see me? Okay, so that's what the responsiveness is like when you're flying the AR drone in a, uh, a no line of sight type scenario. Okay, let's bring it back around to the front. <laughs> and take it back over there. And now you can see I have brought the drone back from where it was. Now, there's a couple things to bear in mind when you're flying the drone. One is the amount of advanced electronics that's in there. There's a couple of cool things. So the camera keeps it from drifting. It also has an ultrasound transmitter and receiver on the bottom of it. That's how it knows what height to stay at. So if I go and I put it at this height, up to, I believe it is three meters. The AR drone can control its height 
within a very accurate range. Check this out. So you can see, it hardly drifts at all. Now, what that means though, is that if I were to take the AR drone and I were to put it up at a height of about five meters and fly over those hedges on the left, as soon as it is above the hedges, it would take off five meters above that. So be careful with your drone. If you go and you try and fly over a shed or over your house, you're gonna fly it up 20 feet, it's gonna jump up another 20 feet, get caught in a cross breeze and get blown away and then you're gonna be buying some replacement parts. So yeah, I think that's pretty much all there is to say about it right now. There's a great modding community around for this thing already. Which is, uh, which is just outstanding because there's mods to, uh, to control it with a standard RC controller. There's mods to do all kinds of neat stuff with it. And it is a very, very cool device. There's also uh, extended batteries out there so you can fly for about 20 minutes at a time. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. So why don't we bring it in for a landing here? Just press the landing button and down it goes. Thanks for checking out my demo video of the Parrot AR drone. Just so you guys know, the way that I'm flying it now, I've only flown it about uh, 10 to 12 times. So that should give you some idea what the learning curve's like. This thing is outstanding compared to other RC aircraft that I have used in the past.